guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. Now, today's video, we are going to be making some prints on canvas. Yes, so this is a Christmas gift idea. This is a reseller's idea or just an idea on how to make your own home decor. So at the Dollar Tree store, stores, I'm sure you all know that they have these canvases for a dollar. Even the big one, this eight by 10 is a dollar, all of them. So cost efficient this is. So I got the idea because I had a viewer, Jamie was so kind to share her digital download of the Dollar General Santa. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, okay, yep. Now I can copy and paste it. So what am I going to put Santa on? So if I went to do wood, I would have had to cut it down in measurements and da 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 blah blah blah. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, I wonder if the Dollar Tree stores still have those big canvases. Okay, so then after doing that, I'm like, you know what? Why don't I share some creations with you all of, I am an Etsy fan, I like to do digital downloads. I've done some labeling on some canisters, on some jars, on some rolling pins. So I'm like, hey, let's do this on these canvases. What a great idea as a gift, as a present, as to keep it yourself. And if you're a reseller, yeah, anything time you can find anything that you can resell for under five bucks. <laughs> yes, because people, yeah, it's hard to find some, something as a reseller to resell as under five bucks, especially when you're a DIY or crafter. So these were perfect. So I'm going to share the process with you all of what, how I did these. And then also along with, let's do some tissue paper and some stamping. And it'll, yeah, because you know, I like, I already love how to do I love doing tissue paper stamping and then putting them on canvas already. I don't know if you've all ever Googled Santa images. Maybe you all that were looking for the Dollar General ones like I was, but oh my goodness, there's some creepy looking Santas out there. Maybe that's what made the Dollar General Santa so popular. One, that it was at the Dollar General and it was very cost efficient. And two, that it just was a friendly, kind eyed Santa. After I made my purchase from Etsy, then I go back into my purchases and then I download it into my computer and then I have a Mac so it's right on my pages and then I can size it appropriate to what canvas I want to put it on. Now I have done a tissue paper on canvases and I have never put copier paper on canvases. And no, I tried to print on tissue paper on my printer. I don't know how you all do it because taping it on, nothing, yeah. Anyway, so I'll show you the fails at the end of the video and some of the tips when I was researching on suggestions and how to put paper onto canvases. But all I'm doing straight here is just, yep, regular old copy paper. I just printed them right off. Um, and now I'm just gonna be using some Mod Podge to put them on. When I was sizing my image to my canvas, I tried to have an overhang. I tried to get it as filled on this piece of paper as I can. That way that I can cut off the edge and that it wraps. I'm not wrapping around the side, I'm just doing the little lip there. The same with this Santa, I'm just, I made sure that it just overlapped just a wee bit. That way I didn't have to see that white of where it wasn't on. Now I found it didn't matter how little or how much Mod Podge I put onto the canvas, I, you're still going to get a little bit of wrinkles. The only thing that I can actually think of is if I would have had white cardstock on hand, which I did not. This is one of the techniques that somebody said to put spritz it with water, but I don't think that got any more wrinkles out. And then it changed the color of my Santa Clauses. So yeah, that's one of the don't do that <laughs> kind of things. But this is how I applied them. Yeah, especially don't spritz it on the top of it like they had suggested. We'll share with you the Santa that I showed you at the first time was my fifth attempt of trying things that had people had suggested on the interweb. So this is one of them I was just sharing with you. I was like, oh yeah, don't do any of this. <laughs>
Well, look what I found when I was doing searches. Oh my goodness, you guys. It is the birds on a branch. This is similar to the IOD brocade transfers. And you know I had to print this out because, yes, I put that one that I did in my booth and it sold it yep, as soon as I put it in there. So why not simple canvases? This were a great gift idea or even keeping it for myself. I can make multiple of these. So here was another technique somebody said to... Flip your canvas upside down, put your image, put it on coming from the back and then rub it from the back of the canvas. Nope, just plain and simply when the Mod Podge absorbs into the paper is when the wrinkles start to happen. But for me, that gives it a homemade look. And yes, you could have probably done pieces of wood if you had pieces of wood and then you cut them down to the size. But I loved the ease of going to the Dollar Tree store, getting a whole bunch of canvases and just printing it out on paper. This is just going to be one of those perfectly imperfect. It's going to be homemade, handmade on a canvas, and they're still going to be beautiful. My conclusion after doing so many of these was just to get it on a thin layer, as thin as you can get that Mod Podge on the canvas is better, and then just rub it on, and then make sure that you have it really applied on those edges and just rub it on the edges, and then just do the best you can and set it off to the side and let it dry. I actually tried it two different techniques of taking the outer edging off. So the razor blade seemed to start to pull a little bit. Even though it was dry, it still kind of pulled. Sharp razor blade, I don't know why. So I knit, I'm like, eh, okay, well, I've already started, so I got to finish. But I found just using sandpaper on those edges worked for cutting that paper the best. And that definitely made just a nice tight package on that top. It didn't overlay on the sides, but oh, here we go, guys. So to tie this all in, a little bit of antiquing wax, a little bit of the clear wax. I'm just lightly dusting that side to bring it all together. And you know I'm going to shadow it in <laughs> onto the canvas itself to kind of frame in those birds. There's just something about antiquing wax that just makes everything all better. And yep, I did the exact same thing with that Santa Claus. That just gives it that aged look, blends in that piece of canvas, blends in that paper, and it just ties the whole. I just went in very gingerly, very lightly. I just have a little bit of that antiquing wax. A little bit of that antiquing wax goes a long way. That's why I have the clear as the backup, but I definitely love fading it in. And then after they're dry, to stiffen it up just a little bit so nothing happens to that paper that I put on that canvas, just a little bit of clear coat. So next we're going to be doing these little canvases and have you all seen these at the Dollar General Store? These little canvases, these little square canvases with these little easels. Just something about something a little is just too cute. And then when I saw these, I knew that I had my Merry and Bright IOD Christmas stamps that had just come in. I'm like, oh, I think that these are the perfect size. I actually had purchased three of these little canvases, so I was trying to match up three of the stamps that fit perfectly onto the canvas. Now I had gotten my Merry and Bright stamp sets from Painted Heirloom, one of my favorite places to shop, and I'll have Avanda Store listed down below, along with a discount code to go along with your first time purchase. So either, you know, I know I'm late in the season and a lot of people are already done making what crafts are going to be, but you definitely don't want to miss out if these are not available for next year. I always forget to video this when you get a new stamp set to season it with just a little bit of sandpaper just to get that manufacturer's edge off and just go over it with a little bit of sandpaper and that just helps your imprint, your print of your stamp turn out a little bit better. 
Now for these canvases, I'm going to be stamping directly onto a tissue paper, just plain white Dollar Tree tissue paper. I love doing this. This is a technique that has always worked out for me. And yes, I wonder, I'll get this in the comments. Why don't I stamp directly onto the canvas? The imprint just does not, the canvas gives, it does not make a clear print. And that way, if I stamp on it and I don't like the image that came off the tissue paper, I can try another one. These stamps have a lot of detail and stamping them onto tissue papers so you can make sure you get that whole image is just, oh my gosh. And I'm trying to get, make sure that the bird image is nice and clear. Now this had where they had some wording in it and I'm having some difficulty that my ink is touching on it. So I think um, if I go to use these again after this, as I'm editing, I might just cut that extra rubber off because yes, it just kept touching my tissue paper. So on the stamp set itself, it has lots of different wording around, so you just have to look to see what will fit in each one of these frames. So I am putting good tidings in this one. Just something about some simple wording in a beautiful outlined frame like this. Oh, I know this is going to be gorgeous. There's just something so beautiful about sheet music. So I'm going to try to do a double tissue paper stamp and we'll see how this works because I want to use this music sheet as my background. And when I'm stamping on my tissue paper, I'm giving myself a lot of extra room because I want that tissue paper to go all the way to the edge of the canvas. Once I couldn't get my hands on a red ink pad, I thought, okay, let's see if I can do Christmas cheer with some of this Dixie Belle Barn Red Ink, just using a little sponge applicator just to dab it on. I know some people say use a brayer, but it's small little letters and I don't want to over ink it up. And then again, that's the nice thing about using it on tissue paper. I can do it until I get that image that is clear. that I have them all stamped out. Now I'm going to just Mod Podge them right onto the canvases. Now for this one, I already have that one glued down. Now I'm going to do the Christmas cheer and I had to actually restamp that because AI yeah, put my wording backwards. I guess I was just having a day, but luckily minimal, minimal cost here. To, but that one, once I started to glue, I was like, oh, that is not right. So I restamped it. Don't worry guys, here it is all fixed. And yes, the double tissue paper, I think looks beautiful. Now here's what I did to cut that tissue paper off. I just took some sandpaper, some 220 sandpaper. I just went back and forth and see how it just cuts it out. Now you want to make sure that this is good and dry or you're just going to be pulling your tissue paper off, but tissue paper does not take long to dry at all. So yep, I'm just rubbing that, it just making a cut. That gave it such a clean line. And then these, I'm going to do that exact same thing where I have the antiquing wax, some clear, just age, just let it age and grab onto that paper. I definitely love how that frames it in and just gives it that old, it's been around look. You know, if I have antiquing wax out, I just can't leave these little easels as is. So I used some of my watered down mixture to just spice these up and give them a little bit more color to go along with their little canvases that are on them. And then I did the exact same thing I did with the paper on the canvases as I sealed them in with some clear coat.
Okay, so what did you all think? I just absolutely loved how they turned out. Yep, I had some trial and error, but doesn't everything new have some trial and error in it? And I don't mind that at all, at all. I don't mind, that's how we learn. From mistakes is how we learn. And yeah, luckily it wasn't much of a vestment and you can't actually get the paper off of those canvases. No worries there and reuse them. So if, you, if I wanted to spend the time to do it and I'll probably hoard them until I do that. So, oh yes, again, thank you, Jamie, for sending me my, that digital download of the Dollar General Santa. And yep, I'll keep that in my Christmas decor. And I don't think I, I don't think I made one to resell. I'm trying to think if I did or not. I can't remember. I tried so many of them. So stay tuned at the end of the video because not everything is perfect and I'd like to share that with you. So I think this is a great gift idea. I think this is a great decorate your home idea. And yep, I shared some that weren't even Christmas. So yes, it, wherever you get digital downloads, if you get them from Etsy and support small business, or if you get them from, what is it, Graphics Fairy and Zazzle, I think it is. Yeah, do whatever, if you can find free prints, then go for it. So, yep. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if I have inspired you in any way, in any of the crafts that I've done, please let me know. And thank you again for being part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye. You can definitely see the color difference and maybe the person had a different type of printer than I did because as soon as I spritzed the water, now I have an aqua <laughs> Santa, which is still fine. Then other than looking a little green, and as we went down, you could just see how I got better and better. And then I was still a little bit off as they dried, they would shift a little bit. So I definitely needed to make sure that I was oversizing them a little bit more because too much of the canvas was showing. And then, yep, that one was a little too wet when I was working on it. And in my mind, when I was using the new Mary and Bright stamps, that the and tidying was a thing. And then after I stamped it out, I'm like, what the heck's and tidying means? So I went around after, yep, I had completed all that and tried to find the good.